Hello everybody. Today we're going to take a look at a problem where we have two different cars that are traveling in opposite directions. They start in positions that they are separated from one another and at some point they're going to cross paths. And in this problem we are going to figure out at what time they will cross paths. We will figure out the position that they cross paths and we will also graph it up a little bit here. So first let's identify the information that we have available to us. We have two cars, car A, I'm going to kind of color code things here. Car A is sitting here. It initially is traveling south towards Denver. I'm given the velocity it's traveling at. And then it says it's going to reach the city 1.5 hours into the trip. I also have information about car B over here. And car B is going to actually start south of Denver by 10 miles and it's going to travel to the north at a known velocity. Everything seems to be revolving around Denver here. I'm going to go ahead and say that Denver is the origin. So I will have a position 0. I will call this D equals 0 for Denver. And I'm going to come through and I'm going to start by writing functions for my two vehicles. The general form of the function is going to look like this. D is a function of T. The position as a function of time is going to be the vehicle's velocity multiplied by time plus whatever their initial position was. For car A, we'll come over here and I will first identify that this one is traveling south at 90 kilometers per hour. I'm going to have to pick some directions in this and so I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say north is going to be the plus direction which obviously means that south is the minus direction and I'm going to use those sign conventions for this entire problem. So if the car is traveling south at 90 that's going to be a minus 90 for the velocity. I'm going to say dA as a function of time is going to be equal to minus 90 km per hour times T plus DI. I actually do not know DI at the moment for this particular vehicle. However, I know more information. I know that at 1.5 hours, this car is going to be at Denver. We've already said that Denver is the position of zero, and so I'm going to plug in 1.5 hours over here and solve this equation for DI. So it's going to be at Denver, that's a position zero, is equal to negative 90 km per hour multiplied by 1.5 hours you notice that these units cancel there plus di 0 is equal to negative 135 km plus di which means that di is equal to positive 135 just doing the arithmetic there so now I actually know the initial position of the car and I'm going to go back and I'm just going to erase this DI up here and I'm going to plug in that known information. So now it's 135 km is the DI. For car B I need to go through and find its information. It's going to look something like this. D of B as a function of time is going to be equal to it is traveling north at 110 kilometers per hour so that's a positive 110 km per hour multiplied by time plus and then I gotta go through and I gotta find my initial position it's actually 10 miles south and so it's gonna be a negative 10 so maybe I'll just erase this little plus that I already put in here so that it's more correctly shown that way. And I have negative 10 km. So these are the two functions. In order for me to figure out what time they're going to cross, I need to understand that there are two things that they're going to share when they cross. So they're going to have the same position and they are going to have the same time. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the equations equal to each other through the left side over here. And now it's going to look something like this. I'm going to take out the units also so that this stays a little cleaner. But for car A, it's negative 90 times T plus 
135 is equal to, now I'm writing down information for car B, 110 times T minus 10. I need to group my like terms, so I'm going to go ahead and move this minus 90T to the other side of the equation, and I'm going to move this minus 10 to the left side of the equation. So this is going to be 145 is equal to 200T. Now divide both sides by 200, and I find that the time is equal to 0 0.725, and I'll bring my units back, and that was hours. So that is a nice uh, piece of information that I was asked to find. Now that I know the time, I can go back in and I can plug it into either of these equations to figure out what position they will cross at. So if I were to do that for car A, again I'm going to leave out the units. So dA at this particular time, 0 0.25 hours, is going to be equal to, remember function notation by the way, this is not a multiply on the left hand side. I'm saying the position at that time is equal to minus 90 multiplied by the same time plus 135 and that is equal to 69.75, bring the units back, kilometers. If I were to go through and just check my work here and plug it in for the B car as well, I would find something that looks like this, D of B at that same time, just to verify here, 725 is going to be equal to 110 times 0 0.725 minus 10. And plugging that into the calculator, you can see that indeed I get the same value. So that gives me confidence in my work. Now what I need to do is I need to go and graph this all up. I'm going to try to pick an appropriate scale for my tick marks over here so that I'm really using all of the space wisely. I have on the position side, I need to be at least a minimum of minus 10. I need to go up to at least 135 km and I believe I actually have nine tick marks. If you give this a little thought you can see that 20 is a pretty decent amount per tick mark and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and make this the origin. So this is Denver, the zero location. This will be minus 40 down here and this up here is gonna be uh, 20, 40, 60, 80. This is 100 which means that that is 140. So we're doing 20s as we move along here. Maybe I'll just write 40 in right there. Now I just need to graph it up. So I'm gonna go over and do car A first. It starts at 135. This would be 120 right there. It's gonna be more up in that area. I still need to pick my time axes down there. If I come over and look at what time they cross, they cross a little under uh, three quarters of an hour. I am going to actually be interested, I don't have to do this, but I'm going to be interested in showing when uh, car A is actually going to get to Denver and so I'm going to go ahead and give us two hours down here to work with so that means that's one hour. This is obviously 0 0.5 hours and this would be 1.5. I think I'm good to go to actually begin my graphing here. I already had my intercept for car A and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight important spots. I know that at a time of 0.725 hours car A is going to be located at almost 70 km and so I'm going to come up here I'm going to find my 70 km mark and then it's a little bit under 0.75 hours and so that's going to be right there. I also know that it's going to reach Denver right here at 1.5 so I can go ahead and draw my straight line. It's constant velocity so I know that that has to be linear. Now we will go through and we will do the next vehicle. It has an intercept of negative 10 which puts it right there it must cross at that same location, the same time, and the same position. 
and so I can go ahead and draw this one. So there I have my graph. I know when the two cars are going to cross paths and perhaps I might even like to label that up. So I'm going to say in X comma Y format 0.725 comma 69.75 so that I know exactly what is going on at that particular point. Hopefully that all made sense to you as we worked through this particular problem and certainly if it did make sense you should let your computer know.